Understanding the root causes of homelessness is really important if we're going to address this crisis. Meet Greg Colburn. He's an assistant professor at the University of Washington. And this is Q&A, the show where we look for answers to some of the biggest questions in our region. Having interviewed a lot of people experiencing homelessness, I can tell you each story is unique, it's tragic, and different factors come together, they interact to produce an outcome. The research on homelessness is very clear that some individual factors like poverty, uh, that drug use or addiction, mental illness, increase the risk of homelessness. There's no doubt about that. The question is, are these factors root causes of homelessness in our region? The reality is, is the consequences of those conditions in Seattle are different than elsewhere. And so the example that I like to use is West Virginia, which is the home of the opioid epidemic in the United States. And so if opioid addiction, which is a, which is a, 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 a tragic circumstance, if that's a driver of homelessness, we should see a lot of homelessness in West Virginia, but in fact, we don't. So the consequences of addiction in West Virginia are very different than they are in Seattle. Greg co-wrote this book, Homelessness is a Housing Problem. The book compares rates of homelessness in different places around the country to better understand the root causes of homelessness. So on this chart and this visual, what you'll see is New York and Boston and Washington DC are on the high end, and then Chicago, for example, is on the low end. And there's about a five to one ratio in per capita rates of homelessness. When we move to counties, the numbers are, are lower because we're including the suburban locations. But what's interesting is that relationship between high and low still holds at about five to one. Why do some places, like LA and Seattle, have five times the per capita rates of homelessness compared with places like Chicago and Cleveland? What is it about Seattle that produces this result when compared to other cities around the country that don't have anywhere near the per capita rates of homelessness that we do? To answer this question, Greg used a statistical measure called R-squared. R-squared helps to analyze how the differences in one variable can explain the differences in another variable. For example, does the amount of poverty in a community predict the amount of homelessness in that community? Do high rates of drug use in a community also indicate high rates of homelessness? Let's take a look at some of his findings. So what we'll see in this graph is um, a relationship between poverty rates and rates of homelessness. Where poverty rates are really high, homelessness tends to be quite low. And so the point here is, is that Seattle doesn't have a homelessness problem because we have more people experiencing poverty. In fact, we're a relatively low poverty community. Detroit, for example, is the most impoverished city in the country. Um, they're at the far right end of this graphic, uh, but they have some of the lowest rates of homelessness. And if poverty really were the root cause of this at a community level, Detroit should have a huge homelessness problem, but in fact they don't. So we need to keep looking for, for a better explanation. Do places with more drug use or mental illness have more homelessness? The next um, two categories we look at are actually um, calculated at the state level. So these are state per capita rates of homelessness relative to illicit drug use and mental illness. So what we see is that there is some variation in rates of mental illness and drug use in states around the country, but it doesn't correlate at all with rates of homelessness. And so the big, the places with higher rates of, of mental illness and drug use aren't places where homelessness is higher. Do places with good weather have more homelessness? People frequently tell me that we have a problem here because the weather is moderate and you, in Chicago it's cold and therefore uh, we have homelessness here. When you plot weather and homelessness, what you see is there's actually no relationship. Do welfare benefits encourage homelessness? A second local contextual uh, factor that people frequently blame for homelessness is generous services. There are stingy states, there are generous states, um, but we don't see disproportionate homelessness in places that are generous. Are unhoused people moving to King County? People say, well, there's, there's a mobility story here, that people are moving here because of, of weather benefits, et cetera. And so what we look at is low-income migration. There are people below the po poverty line moving to Seattle, just as there are in, in all cities in the United States. But there's not disproportionate movement to places with high rates of homelessness. What role does political party leadership play in homelessness? Well, I've heard a lot of people say that it's left-leaning or democratic policies that are to blame. But what's interesting is we looked at all the cities in our sample, which is 30 cities across the United States. And in all of those data points, 85% of those years, uh, a Democrat was in charge. And so if Democratic policies are to blame, how do we then explain the huge variation between Chicago and Cleveland, which are Democratic strongholds but have very low rates of, of homelessness, and New York, Boston, Seattle, San Francisco, which, which are also blue. Do places with higher rents have more homelessness? 
we then turn to housing market characteristics. And um, this is where we start to see uh, some pretty compelling statistical evidence of explanatory power between uh, uh, one of these variables and rates of homelessness. And so what we see is when you plot median uh, rents, um, in places that are expensive, homelessness is high, and in places that are cheap, uh, homelessness is low. And we look at vacancy rates, again, a similar story. And again, it's more statistically uh, powerful than, than other explanations. When vacancy rates are low or housing is not available, we see much higher rates of homelessness and vice versa. Ultimately, Chicago has, has relatively high vacancy rates and is, is far more affordable than, um, than Seattle. And it also explains the, the very odd situation of Detroit, which has the highest rate of poverty in the country, uh, but has very, very low rates of, of homelessness because housing is abundant. In fact, they're tearing down housing in Detroit because of the huge population losses that they've experienced. And so that abundant and relatively cheap housing really mitigates uh, the, the problem of homelessness in those communities. If a lack of affordable housing is driving homelessness, what are the obstacles to building more housing in our region? One is topography. And so places with mountains and water, it tends to be less elastic, meaning it's harder to build in response because you run into mountains or water. The second issue is the regulatory environment in which you're trying to, um, to construct housing. So some places it's very easy to build. Uh, it's easy to get a permit. Uh, the zoning is, is, uh, accommodates uh, housing of all types. And in other places, it's very difficult. So imagine 10 friends in a circle with 10 chairs, they all stand up, a leader starts playing music, they walk around in a circle, the leader takes one chair out, and in this case, Mike has an ankle injury and was on crutches, and given his uh, impairment, was unable to move quickly and therefore lost the game, was left without a chair when the music stopped. And so if we were to interview Mike at the end of the game and say, Mike, why do you think you lost the game? What would he say? He'd say, well, I had a bad ankle. But if we take a step back and really think critically, what was the cause of Mike's chairlessness? It was the fact that we didn't have enough chairs. And that's really an analogy for what's going on in Seattle right now, in the sense that ankle injuries or other vulnerabilities don't cause homelessness, but they do identify the people who are most likely to experience homelessness in a constrained housing market like Seattle. I would say that there's one real silver lining in, in the homelessness story, and that is the story of veterans' homelessness. Veterans' homelessness has fallen uh, by 50% over the last decade, which is a real success story. And, and so people say, well, how did we do it? And the answer is that we gave them housing. And the question is, will we then provide um, similar responses to, to a broader community of people who, who need access to housing? And so that's really the, uh, the ray of, of positive light in, in an otherwise somewhat dismal story. And, and I think if we can replicate that policy response a little more broadly, hopefully we can make a similar dent in this, in this problem, both here in, in King County and, and around the country.